So in our introduction to rank video where I defined the, the, what, a, what the rank of a matrix is, I briefly stated uh, an interesting property that I didn't prove at the time was that the column rank is equal to the row rank. So um, in this video, what I want to do is, is give a, a, a formal proof as to why um, the, the column rank of a matrix is always equal to the row rank and vice versa. And so I'm going to start up at the top, and I'm going to write down my claim. And so my claim is this. My claim is that we have some matrix A. Um, a is, let's just say that A is a K by L matrix. It has some rows that has K rows and L columns. Um, so it's a K by L matrix. Then... I'm stating that the rank of the calls of A, the columns of A, is equal to the rank of the rows of A, right? And so now I have to go through some steps uh, to back that claim. And so let's start with the first step. What I'm going to do, and I, this proof is sort of divided into to two parts. Um, one, I'm going to prove that in this, given this set of definitions, right, or this set of steps, that we find out that the, the row rank of A is less than or equal to the column rank. All right, let's go ahead and show an example, explain why that's the case first. And so we're going to let U, okay be equal to the, the column rank of A. This could be some number one, two, up to a million. It is the rank of A. Then I'm saying that there exists a basis. So there exists a basis, right? And it's B1 all the way up to BU. These are all basis vectors. Right. And these are uh, of k by one column vectors. Right, these are column vectors, um, and they in that span the same space as a, and that should be easy to agree with. Um, a has some column vectors, right? Uh, if we have A over here, it has, you know, uh, these column vectors, right? And they, these vectors, you know, all linear, possible linear combinations of them, uh, you know, span a space that just so happens to have a dimension equal to U. And if we have a space whose dimension is equal to U, um, then we must have a basis for that space. Every space has a basis. And that basis, uh, those sets of basis vectors, they're linearly independent, and every vector in that space can be represented as a linear combination of those vectors. And if they're linearly independent and they span the entire space, and the space is of dimension u, then there must be u of them. And so um, that makes sense. And so I'm gonna let B, like capital B, be equal to a um, a K by U matrix obtained by um, columns being basis vectors. And so you can imagine B's like this. Some matrix B1. Right, I just stuff those column vectors into this matrix, and then and then now they're the columns, they're the column vectors of this matrix. And so, hopefully, we can agree that um, that A uh, can be expressed or represented, however you want to say it, as a linear. I'm gonna shorthand this combination of B1 up to BU, right? 
because A's column vectors span the same area are in the same space as those basis vectors and they're the same dimension and so A's column ve vectors must be uh, must be able to be represented as a linear combination of these basis vectors and so let's um let's collect let's collect uh, the the coefficients of the linear combination into uh, a matrix. Okay. And let's call it C, which is a U by L matrix. And it's U by L because we have U basis vectors, and then we have L columns in A. Such that Scroll down. A is equal to B times C, right? Because K is a, or A is a K by L, B is a K by U, and C is a U by L, and so you see these match up, and so this produces a K by L, um, and that should be, and that's going to give us A. Now. Note that um, there are U rows in C, right? And so the, the max rank of the max uh, row rank, so I should say row rank of C is u right it's got you know it's it's got u a u amount of rows and so you cannot have no more rank than than u even if all the row vectors are linearly independent that's the max rank and so since we're so right we're writing a as b times c um so we can say that the rows of a are linear combinations of the rows of C um, due to this matrix multiplication. And so um, if the rows of A are linear combinations of the rows of C, then the, the row, then it must be, like we're writing the rows of A as a linear combination of the rows of C, it must be that the, the row rank of A must be less than or equal to the row rank of C, which we know is equal to U, and so this must be less than or equal to U. And bringing this all back, we know that U is equal to the, the column rank of A, because we bring it all the way back. We, we stated that um, we let U be equal to the column rank of A right here. And so we're saying the row rank of A is less than or equal to the row rank of C. And so by that reasoning, the row rank of A is less than or equal to U, um, which is its column rank. And so we just proved right here that the row rank is the row rank of A is less than or equal to the column rank.